<laughs> On this episode of Fish Warrior, that fish is unstoppable. Jakob does battle with a prehistoric predator from the deep. Mm, come on! Pulling like a runaway freight train. This is not a fight, this is a war. It's coming up, it's coming up. A white sturgeon. Whoa! This is an iron footer for sure. In the wild north, will Jakob get his monster sized opponent? Yes, that's what I want! Before the wilderness gets him. This is by far the most aggressive black bear that I've seen. This is Jakob Wagner, extreme angler. With multiple world records under his belt, he's tracking down the planet's biggest river goliaths. Go, 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 it's a big fish! On a mission to find and protect the last remaining freshwater giants. Nothing can stop the fish warrior. Vancouver, Canada. Extreme angler Jakob Wagner's latest expedition sends him in search of a prehistoric river Goliath. I'm in British Columbia, and I was always dreaming about this place because of white surgeon. I never caught one before, and I'm going to try to catch a big one on the Fraser River. Loading up, Jakob begins his journey to the Fraser River. There, he'll meet a team of scientists and anglers who'll help him on his mission to catch and release a giant nine-foot white sturgeon. Along the way, they'll also collect vital samples for species conservation. Jakob, nice Taylor. to meet you. Nice to How meet was you. Your trip? Jakob's teaming up with fellow angler and oceanographer Galen Rosenwax. So tell me, have you caught surgeon before? I haven't. Yeah? But I'm really excited to. I've always wanted to. I've always wanted to catch a white sturgeon because historically and evolutionarily, they're just so incredible. They live part of their life in the ocean and then come into the freshwater to spawn. So for me, here's a fish that sort of lives in both worlds. Accustomed to fishing on the open ocean, Galen has limited experience in fresh water, and Jakob's agreed to show her the ropes. I travel all over, really looking for big and new fish to catch. But so you can go a little bit more. I feel very fortunate to join Jakob on this expedition. To make the arduous 25-mile trek upriver, the team joins local guide Dean Work, an expert on white sturgeon and the river they call home. Yeah, he's coming. Yep. Hey, nice job. Good. At more than 850 miles long, the Fraser is the largest river in British Columbia. Here, just 100 years ago, white sturgeon were plentiful. But rampant overharvesting has driven the population down to critical levels. With shark-like tails and cartilaginous skeletons, white sturgeon date back to the age of the dinosaurs, over 65 million years ago. Known to grow over 20 feet long, weighing nearly half a ton, white sturgeon of any size fight with remarkable strength. And that power translates to serious vertical thrust. 
using short bursts of speed to catapult out of the water, the white sturgeon earns the nickname River Marlin. White sturgeon is one of the largest sturgeon species on our planet. They fight like crazy, they jump like crazy, and they are beautiful. But no amount of power can protect the white sturgeon from its greatest weakness. These majestic creatures have an extremely slow growth rate, taking decades to reach the monster size Jakob seeks. Believing the largest may have been decimated by overfishing, no one knows how many 20-foot whoppers are still out there. An hour into their journey, the team stops to pick up Steve McAdam, a biologist who's collecting tissue samples from white sturgeon in order to track the growth rate of these living dinosaurs. A hundred years ago, there was a big fishery and they caught a lot of the big fish that were in this river and the population went down. And so now we're trying to figure out how far did it go down? And is it coming up again? Or is it stable? Or is it still in trouble? Though British Columbia made it illegal to harvest white sturgeon in 1994, allowing only catch and release fishing, the number of large breeding age individuals may be dangerously low. You can fish right out the back in here and catch fish. You can fish in this little trough. It gets very deep off the sandbar and deep into that bank over there. And it drops off into 65 to 80 feet of water. Okay, let's get some bait. Perfect, let's get some bait on these rods. Let's get fishing. Probably cut this one down and get Coop and maybe take that 28 off of there okay. and just run about a 24 ounce weight would probably be really good. So we just drop in a hook in here, pop that through. And there, you got a nice, nice sturgeon morsel there. So we're gonna get this one in the water. Perfect. Gonna hit the bottom. Fishing technique for sturgeon is kind of strange because when they take the bait, they can play with the bait for 15, 20 minutes, even half an hour, and it can be a big fish. So you have to really concentrate on your tip of the rod, and you can see tap, tap, tap. Oh, yeah. See? Yeah, it's a fish. Little taste test. And even tap, tap, tap can mean it's a monster fish, 500, 600 pounds. Yeah, that's a fish. Oh, we just, is he? It's coming, it's coming. Hit him, hit him, you gotta hit him. Oh, uh oh, is he off or he's on? Reel down, reel down, reel down, reel down, lift up, lift up, lift up. Still there, still there. Keep going. Okay, let's get these other rods out of the way here, you guys. Galen. Galen keeps a close eye on Jakob's technique, knowing soon it will be her turn to take on one of these beasts. Oh, nice. I watched him and how he dealt with the strike and how the sturgeon hit the bait. It looks like a good one. Jakob must keep the line tight. Barbless hooks can easily come loose, allowing the fish to spit the bait. He's having fish. He's having fish. It's coming up, it's coming up, it's going to jump! Let me bring mine in. It's coming up, okay? I think it's a bigger fish than four feet. I don't know, it's my first white surgeon in my life, but. It's a strong fish. Oh, you're gaining on it now. You're gaining on it now. Nice work. There we go. Oh, there we go. Yes, nice one. Wow. Beautiful. Five feet, I think. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, nice. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Nice. Look at that. Hey, Good that's fish. A nice fish. There's your fish. I'm very fish. happy. Dean lifts the sturgeon into a special cradle designed to keep the fish safe for examination. Nice. Fish is in the boat. Nice. Simple like that. Done. Okay, so that hook is right here, right on the edge of the mouth and he's trying to clamp down on me and I'm just gonna turn that out, nice barbless hook. See how quick, quick that's out of there? Uh, yeah. Nice and simple. Fish is in, I love my babies. That's my baby. First catch, what do you think? It's a good fish. It's a beautiful fish. This Fraser torpedo is just in front of me. It's uh, incredible because I was always dreaming about this moment and I just love it. I can see this living dinosaur of Fraser River for the first time in my life. It's incredible. Wow. <laughs> See the mouth. 
Now I can understand why this fish can take whole salmon inside. Yeah, they, they just... The mouse is huge. They hunt by smell and they use the whiskers, am I right? Absolutely. So those are barbels, they have four and they're just full of chemical sensors and they kind of dribble over the bottom with them and they can sense prey. They've also got a lot of sensory nerves in, in the nose for smell as well. And if you touch the body of white sturgeon, you can feel straight away the muscles all the way down. That's why is the fish so powerful and check out the tail. It's like hooking into the train. Yeah, it's very important to keep the fish wet like this. They're very tolerant of low oxygen conditions, so that helps us in the sampling. They're very calm, but we always obviously have to be as fast as possible. This is a uh, pit tag reader. Are you going to give electric shock to this fish or? <laughs> no, absolutely not. We're just gonna turn this on and we're gonna charge the pit tag that hopefully is in this fish. Look at that. Ah. It's 4230460. Every pit tag or passive integrated transponder has its own ID number, allowing researchers to track growth and migration data each time the fish is recaptured. Can we start measuring? Yeah, I hold it here. Seven. I think 157. Yeah? Yeah, 157. That's perfect. So 157 centimeters. That's five foot two. Okay, take the sample. Sure. And you want to be just below the knuckle, so we'll make our first cut right there. So it doesn't harm the fish at all? No. Nope. I'm very sorry for the fish, but I really hope that it will help for a future generation of white surgeon. Yeah. Okay, so we got it. And it's just this little piece of tissue. Having completed their research goals, Jakob Careful. and the team move fast to release the fish. I hold the hat. Thank you very much. Whoa! <laughs> That's always so beautiful when such a big fish is going from the boat and you know you have a chance to catch it again. With the fish safely back in the water, Steve shows Jakob and Galen how valuable their sample is. We take a thin section of that and then I mount it on a, uh, on a microscope slide. And then under the microscope we can count the growth rings so we'll know how old this fish is. And so we can do that, that helps us monitor the population. Jakob drops bait a second time and turns the rod over to Galen. Now it's your turn. Uh-oh. Ten footer I'm for ready. you. That's right. Yeah, that's what we want. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> nice hook set, good. Thanks. So how do you feel? I feel good. When I picked up the second rod, I knew exactly how that sturgeon was gonna act so that I was able to hook up with the fish. There it is, there it is! Oh, oh nice jump. But as the mammoth fish jumps, Galen gets her first taste at fighting this freshwater goliath. He doesn't want to come up at all. Be careful. The engine. Jakob's fish warrior in training, Galen Rosenwax, is hanging on for dear life. Hooked into a huge white sturgeon, she's struggling for control. These are strong fish. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even imagine what the big ones feel like. Oh, the fish just turned. Did you see that? I saw that. I felt it. Come on. Be careful now. Be careful. It's a back and forth battle. Good. Good work. Okay. But try to pull hard now. That's the moment, Galen. Now. It's coming up, it's coming up. Finally, Galen gets the upper hand. It came up and it was just stunning. Really a beautiful, beautiful fish. Nice job. Hey, what do you say about that? It was just fantastic. My first white sturgeon that I've ever caught. Beautiful fish. You're bringing them in. Here it comes. Nice and gentle, coming in, nice and gentle. Beautiful. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done, well done. Nice fish. Way to go, team. Fantastic go. stuff. Okay, Let me see my fish. fish. Using Dean's special scanner, Galen checks the fish for tags embedded under its skin. Maybe up here? Is it? No, no tag. How do you call this version, surgeon? <laughs> <laughs> Hold that in your hand, we'll just get the... Dean pops in a fresh tag with a syringe, a rare opportunity to add another subject to vital sturgeon research. So we're just gonna go back here, we're gonna slide that in. Done, in, finished, tag fish. Oh, awesome. fish. So That's easy. how quick it is, done. You gonna measure? Yep. Okay. 
138. At four and a half feet, it's a huge catch for a rookie freshwater angler, but it's still less than half the size they're looking for. Okay. Gently. Head in and just let it slide in. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Steve. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. It was a great day. Yeah. Great information. Oh, wonderful to be with you guys. Yeah. Always better stay on the river than in the office. With Galen's catch back in the water safe, the first day of the expedition draws to a close. The team's catches leave Jakob hopeful that much larger white sturgeon are lurking somewhere nearby. Cruising into a narrow canyon, they get their first glimpse of the secluded beach they'll call home for the next six days. Our own private piece of wilderness. It's beautiful. Hey. Hey, man, how are you? Jakob and Galen are greeted by camp manager Curtis Myers. Armed with a shotgun, he delivers some alarming news. I had to come in, I came in on the boat today and decided I was going to try and do a little sturgeon fishing off the back of the boat and uh, just throw the rods out and look up on the rocks behind us there and um, there was a bear sitting on the rocks. And I've been around thousands of black bears and this is by far the most aggressive one that I've seen. Are Sears? Definitely. Like the majestic white sturgeon that rule this river, bears are kings of the wilderness. Normally non-aggressive, a hungry bear can be deadly, and they don't appreciate trespassers. I'm telling you, we, we have to be careful tonight. That's I, bad. So we should make a fire and t take care that the, the bear is not going to, I mean, not coming to the camp. Yeah, it's not good. It's not, no. not good at all. No. Good morning, British Columbia. Almost so. The bear didn't come and visit us last night, which is a nice surprise, because we really thought that it was going to come in, but it didn't. We had all kinds of little critters visit our tent with all of our food last night. I think they're probably like little mice sort of scurrying about. You can see all of the traps. But um, no bear, so that was good. River. The team's destination is a spot on the Fraser River where the shallow swift water drops off into a deep pool. The perfect place to find massive white sturgeon. Good spot. It goes from 15 feet down to 25. It looks really good. Yeah, it's a nice spot here. Casting out, Jakob and the team wait patiently for over an hour with no sign of a sturgeon. No, 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 this is a fish. It's going. Yeah, it's going. <laughs> big fish! That's a big fish! That's a big fish! Come on, come on, come on, guys! When I set the hook, I know straight away it's, it's a big fish. Oh, guys! Oh, still going, still going, still going. The fish is peeling my line from the reel. That's the fish. That's the reason why I'm here. And it has to be just like unstoppable submarine. Still going downstream, going, 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 going. Yes, that's what I want. That's the fish, that's the fish, that's the fish. Oh, wow. And I stop the fish, reel in a little bit, and the fish is again, you know, going downstream. Oh, wow! That fish is unstoppable. Ah, I was fighting for this meters for last 15 minutes. I thought 
for sure we're gonna at least see the fish. Always when I try to lift the fish up, she fired me back. Whoa! Watch the motor, watch the motor down here. Coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. Oh! Woo nice fish! Whoa! Beautiful coloration. Do you see wow, that? So that white surgeon is really white. <laughs> it's really difficult to say how incredible moment. I mean, all the fighting and, and finally when you see the fish on the surface, it's like trip back in time to when dinosaurs lived. Wow. A fat fish. The beast is too big to bring into the boat. In order to measure and tag the massive fish, the team heads to shallow water. Slow and steady. It's absolutely white. Whoa! Do you have it? Wow, you're beautiful. Wow! This is one of the most beautiful fish what I ever caught in my life, man. Absolutely white. You know, that's a pretty rare sturgeon. Probably you would see that one in a thousand fish. And Are you serious? Absolutely. On the water, things are heating up again. Seems like one sturgeon's just teasing me. Just keeps tapping at the line and not taking the bait. Hit it, hit it more. Yeah, we got it. Even with experience taking on ocean heavyweights, Galen's in unfamiliar territory, fighting a freshwater goliath like the white sturgeon. Well, I've caught a lot of big fish in my life, and fishing for sturgeon is definitely unique. It's gonna jump. It's gonna jump. Oh, oh it's a nice, nice fish. fish. A tiny fish fights very hard, and then a five-foot fish is, feels almost like a truck at the other end of the line. It's just screaming out. Now that Felt the hook, he's uh, taking a lot of line. I'm telling you, your fish is at least five feet long. That's how big I am. Yeah. It's not bad. First, you gotta get him up. Just one flick of its tail, and it's just so powerful, and it knows how to use the current to fight against you. It's getting warm. Yeah? <laughs> I might need the belt. It's just taking line. Yeah. It's a good fish. Let me help you here a little bit. Keep your rod up, though. Don't let him flatline you. He's just taking line. That's it. Nice. 40 kg fisherman against 50 kilo of fish. <laughs> Unfair advantage, fish. That's it. Yeah, middle. That's it. Now you're winning. There he is. Yep, yeah, it's, it's nice fish. Have a fish, have a fish. After an epic struggle outside her weight class, Galen finally wrestles the sturgeon to the boat. Hey, come on. Oh, oh wow. Wow. That's a nice fish. Hey. <laughs> oh. Nice work. We're rock and roll. Pretty, pretty fish. Wow, really beautiful. Oh, wow, look at that mouth. You fit your whole hand in there. Without no problem. Careful. The team takes a quick measurement. And the right side is 161. Hopla! Be careful, it's very sharp. Great, I think we need to get him back in the water soon though. Alright, bye.
Thank you for coming on my line. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Yes! Well done! Thank well you. done! That was a great fish. Yeah. Thank you. Cruising back into the canyon at dusk, adventure angler Jakob Wagner and his team make an ominous discovery. From the boat, they spot black bear standing on the rocks, stalking the campsite. On shore, Jakob finds camp manager Curtis Myers armed and standing guard. He's a male and he's all beat up. He looks like he's blind in the one That's eye. bad. Ears are all chewed up. Um, so he's kind of a bad boy. Yeah. So we saw him just only maybe 15 minutes ago on the same place over there. Oh, yeah, like and he's back out again. 50 meters he'll still from be here. Laying, he'll still be right over there. We're going to have a hard time getting him to leave. He's Curtis blind. describes his attempt to drive the bear away yeah. earlier that day. So I walked over, yelled at him, and made lots of noise, and right there, didn't run away. Turned and walked off. This is serious business, so we have to be careful. And if this bear is blind, these guys are crazy, you know? They can hunt so well anymore, they like to get easy prey. Curtis, now on high alert, assures Jakob and the rest of the team he'll be keeping watch throughout the night. The next morning, Jakob is back on the Fraser River in British Columbia, intent on catching an enormous white sturgeon, nine feet or bigger. Oh, nice. Yeah. It looks like a good one. When I set the hook, I know straight away it's going to be a big fish. This is a heavy fish. I can't pull the fish from the bottom. Oh, wow. And that's a good sign. The movements are so different. The movements of white surgeon, the small ones, yeah. are fast. This fish is slow. I can feel the tail on the line. Oh, wow. Plus, he's just swimming away. Yeah. He may not still know that he's even hooked yet. You see, still going, still going, still going, still going. This fish looks like unstoppable. Whoa, 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 whoa. Baby, where are you going? Whoa, whoa. We're sitting in 20 some feet of water, but it just goes down the side of the bank here and falls into 65, 70, 80 feet of water. These old fish really know how to find the snags in this Well, river. they're smart. There's a reason that they get so big. Man, the fish is trying to get into the main current. Come on! Oh, whoa, 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 we are going for a walk. Jakob's worst fear is realized. The fish has gone deep. It's so extremely powerful fish, man. I feel every muscle in my body. Now I can understand why most people give up. But this is not the case. This is not going to happen. An hour and a half. And still so much line out. I think it's going to be a while longer. The battle becomes a classic tug of war on the water. But Jakob's the one losing ground. I pull half meter, the fish pull meter. I pull meter, fish pull two meters. It's incredible. It's like fight with dead weight. Come on! I hope it's a big fish. No way to pull this fish from the bottom. No way. Jakob's palms are sore and blistering. Galen helps him don a glove to endure the marathon struggle. What do you think? A little bit more. Thanks. Click, click, click. Come on! Now two hours in, the struggle continues to seesaw back and forth. I try to reel in the fish, peel my line from the reel again. I take the line, the fish takes the line again. Ah, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going. I can't pull the fish from the bottom. It's, it's just impossible. Another 30 minutes pass and the fish won't budge an inch, but Jakob won't give up. 
In Dean's 20 years on the river, he's never seen such a grueling fight. This is a huge fish on right now. Two and a half hours. I mean, and for one person to be battling a fish that long, wow. This fish could weigh 500 to 800 to over 1,000 pounds. Baby, stop, please. Please, for a while. I would love to do the same thing. <laughs> My brain is cooked because of the sun. My arms are nearly dead. And the fish doesn't seem to be tired at all. I thought she was getting tired a couple minutes ago. She gave that hard tug and then you got some line, but then it all just went away. Reaching the three hour mark, this catch could be one of Jakob's greatest physical and mental victories, if he can reel in the fish. This is not a fight, this is a war. <laughs> Completely unaware of Jakob's epic battle with a massive white sturgeon, camp manager Curtis Myers is in serious trouble. All right, this is round three, male bear. Seeing him on the same set of rocks, even closer this time. So I guess we failed to chase him away. <laughs> now I don't know what to do. This bear's clearly aggressive. Curtis needs to take action now. We have a problem. We gotta solve it one way or the other. Somebody's gonna walk and surprise him. We already know that he's not gonna run away. He's gonna charge if surprised. And we gotta get him out of here. So I'm gonna go over there loud. Hopefully we can persuade him to leave. Here it goes. I'm just gonna check and make sure everything's good in here. That's good. Hey! I thought we had an agreement. Did we not? You can't be here. Roof! Yeah, it's scared. It's getting aggressive again. It's a bad sign. There's a place I can shoot from here. In case he comes, he's pissed. Oh, you want to play? The warning shot seems to work, but Curtis can't be sure how far the bears run off. That was pretty crazy. It was less than 10 feet. But it looked like he was coming this way, so definitely keep my eyes open this afternoon. Tell you, the shotgun ain't going very far. Meanwhile, out on the Fraser River, Jakob is now four hours into an all-out war with a giant white sturgeon. I really know how to fight with a big fish, but after first four hours of fight, I was really exhausted. My whole body was shaking. I couldn't find comfortable position for fighting anymore. All my body was just dead. It looks like she's back on the bottom. As the fight drags on to five hours, Jakob's running out of steam. His only hope is that the fish is just as tired. Just man versus beast, you know? He'd get some line in and then the sturgeon would take more out. And it was just a back and forth sort of seesaw battle. This is not the fun anymore, if you know what I mean. But it's good, pull baby, pull. You have to get tired as well. Wait a sec, wait a sec, I, I try to stop the fish, okay? Suddenly, the sturgeon gets a second wind <laughs> and rips more line from Jakob's reel. How long has it been now? It's been five hours and 40 minutes. It means that this is my longest freshwater fight in my life. I've never seen a fight that long in all of my life fishing. I think my longest fight maybe was an hour and a half and really just Amazing to watch. Amazing that one person could angle a fish that long. To give Jakob a fighting chance, the team must position him directly above the fish. But there's a problem. Jakob's reel's almost empty. 
If they move the boat, they'll break the line, losing the fish. Dean Radio's fellow fishing guide, Chris Cisla, for backup. Hey, Chris, you copy? Ready. Thanks, Chris. We, uh, we, got, uh, we got a massive fish on here, and uh, we really need your help. Think you guys can get in here? Yeah, absolutely. We're not too far away from you guys, so uh, we'll boogie up and uh, meet you there in a couple minutes. But even changing boats could be a risky maneuver for Jakob. Okay, we need to jump on your boat and try to lift the fish because we can't get it out. Yeah, no problem. I'll just pull the back of your boat and hop on in. Okay. Excellent. Okay, go ahead. Hurry, 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 hurry. Someone has to take this rod. Reeling fast. I know I have to pull as hard as I can. I will lose the fish or I will get a fish. Only these two options. The line can break in any time. After seven brutal hours fighting a titanic predator, Jakob Wagner uses all his remaining strength to put an end to the battle. The fish is so incredibly heavy that we can't pull the fish on the surface only by rod. Okay, someone has to grab the rod. I will grab the line. Come here and grab the rod. Be careful. Yep. So I give the rod to Galen and with my gloves try to handline the fish on the surface. Whoa. Whoa. No, don't, don't hold it. Don't hold it. As Jakob pulls the fish in close enough to tow it to shore, slowly, the slowly. team finally discovers the reason for Jakob's unbelievably long fight. It's foul hooked. Hooked onto one of the fish's rear fins instead of its mouth, Jakob had no way to turn it back toward him. At the full mercy of the sturgeon's awesome power, a long fight was inevitable. When I finally the fish in front of me, I have to say I'm disappointed because after seven hours of fight, I'm hoping that it's a much bigger fish. It's not a small fish, but we were hoping for something else. Okay, we'll just get this scan right on the left side of the skull, looking down. Oh! Oh, it's a recapture, look at that. Tech. So how long is this fish? It's uh, 247 centimeters to the tip of the tail. It's eight feet long. This fish is in pristine condition. And we're gonna get to release this, send it on its way, and let somebody else catch it again. But with just two days left on his expedition, Jakob's chance of catching a nine-footer is beginning to run out. Later that night, Jakob sees something that could spell disaster for the expedition. Sitting here trying to get a bait fish, watching my tip of the rod, and suddenly just behind the tip on the other side on the rock, I see a black bear. But he will come back to me, so we really have to stay intense and stay all together. On the fourth morning of his mission to catch a nine-foot white sturgeon, Jakob and camp manager Curtis are on the hunt, on land. By turning the tables on the dangerous black bear, they hope to drive it away for good. After a short search, the team discovers the bear's den, just 300 yards from the camp. He lives here. We found some bones around his, I would say, house. Yeah. And he doesn't want to leave at all. It's no longer a mystery why the bear keeps showing up. This is its home. For the safety of the crew, Curtis must break camp, cutting the expedition short by a full two days. This will be the last day on the river and the last chance to catch and tag a giant nine-foot white sturgeon. The team drops anchor at one of Dean's favorite spots. Jakob casts. Okay. 
right away, a fish takes the bait. Yeah, I can feel the difference straight away. This is not five footer. No way, this fish is just going when she wants. You are not fighting only with the fish, but as well with the strong fish. And the current is so extremely fast. It's so difficult to fight with these giants. Uh, the fish is pulling Lana like crazy. Mm, come on! Be careful, it's going to jump, it's going to jump! Oh! oh! Galen, did you see that? Something so incredible here jumping like that. It's absolutely amazing. It really is. It's going up, it's going up, it's going up! Woohoo! Wow! It's coming up again, it's coming up. Okay. Come on! It's coming up, it's coming up! Oh. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> this fish is absolutely crazy. <laughs> this fish is butterfly, it's not a fish. This fish is more in the air than in the water. With a powerful pull, he brings the giant back to the surface, finally getting a glimpse of its true size. Oh! Oh! This is that. a monster! Oh, look at that, that giant! giant. This, this is a male on that This fish. is a giant! Up, up, up! Whoa! Whoa, this is a 940 for sure. That's a big fish. Dean, did you see that fish? What a fish! Man, this is a fish. Oh, so the surface. Here he is. Wow! <laughs> That's the old Whoa! I think the best way is if Galen holds the rod and I will try to keep the fish from the boat and try to hold the fish as close as possible. She's so heavy. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Give me Good more line. Give me more line. Ready? Yes. Okay, go. Do you have him? Yeah, I hope so. I'm not sure about that. So powerful fish. Wow. Ah. Woo. Yes. Gail and Dean. Nice work. We did it! Woo! No way, you have to help me, guys. They run the scanner over the sturgeon. Whoa. No? Oh, it looks like a virgin. A little bit, a little bit up. Nothing. There's no tag inside. Nothing. Man, this is incredible. Such a big fish wow. and it's a virgin. Left side? Left side looking down upon the skull. Dean implants a radio frequency ID tag at the base of the sturgeon skull. And then we just keep the tag up nice and high. We go in, quick, high, done, finished, over. It takes all hands on deck to keep the fish steady for the measurement. Okay, give me the measure tape. Jakob hopes it's the nine foot sturgeon he's been searching for. This is the left side left. first. And the tip of the tail, please. It's almost the whole tape measure. 279. To meet the 79? 110 10 inches. inches. So feet, how many feet? Nine feet, two inches. That's amazing. <laughs> That's, That's a, a big fish. fish. At nine feet, two inches, it's the biggest catch of the expedition. <laughs> it's big. It's over 250 pounds. Wow. Huge, beautiful fish. Okay, thank you very much. I think we should make a picture. Take a couple pictures and let her swim. Lifting this 300 pound behemoth takes the whole team. One, two, three, up! Oh. Woo! Oh. Woo! Oh. That's Look a that size is baby. <laughs> fish. Oh. Yeah! <Great> beauty! <laughs> nice <Damn>. work! <laughs> now, let me dive with this. Beautiful living dinosaur.
<laughs> On this episode of Fish Warrior, that place is unstoppable. Jakob does battle with a prehistoric predator from the deep. Mm, come on! Pulling like a runaway freight train. This is not a fight, this is a war. It's coming up, it's coming up. White sturgeon. Whoa! This is an iron footer for sure. In the wild north, will Jakob get his monster sized opponent? Yes! That's what I want! Before the wilderness gets him. This is by far the most aggressive black bear that I've seen. <laughs> this is Jakob Wagner, extreme angler. With multiple world records under his belt, he's tracking down the planet's biggest river goliaths. Go, 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 it's a big fish! On a mission to find and protect the last remaining freshwater giants. Nothing can stop the fish warrior. Vancouver, Canada. Extreme angler Jakob Wagner's latest expedition sends him in search of a prehistoric river Goliath. I'm in British Columbia, and I was always dreaming about this place because of white surgeon. I never caught one before, and I'm going to try to catch a big one on the Fraser River. Loading up, Jakob begins his journey to the Fraser River. There, he'll meet a team of scientists and anglers who'll help him on his mission to catch and release a giant nine-foot white sturgeon. Along the way, they'll also collect vital samples for species conservation. Jakob, nice Taylor. to meet you. Nice to How meet was you. Trip? Jakob's teaming up with fellow angler and oceanographer Galen Rosenwax. So tell me, have you caught surgeon before? I haven't. Yeah? But I'm really excited to. I've always wanted to. I've always wanted to catch a white sturgeon because historically and evolutionarily, they're just so incredible. They live part of their life in the ocean and then come into the freshwater to spawn. So for me, here's a fish that sort of lives in both worlds. Accustomed to fishing on the open ocean, Galen has limited experience in fresh water, and Jakob's agreed to show her the ropes. I travel all over, really looking for big and new fish to catch. But still, you can go a little bit more. I feel very fortunate to join Jakob on this expedition. To make the arduous 25-mile trek upriver, the team joins local guide Dean Work, an expert on white sturgeon and the river they call home. Okay, it's coming. Yep. Hey, nice job. Good. At more than 850 miles long, the Fraser is the largest river in British Columbia. Here, just 100 years ago, white sturgeon were plentiful. But rampant overharvesting has driven the population down to critical levels. With shark-like tails and cartilaginous skeletons, white sturgeon date back to the age of the dinosaurs, over 65 million years ago. Known to grow over 20 feet long, weighing nearly half a ton, white sturgeon of any size fight with remarkable strength. And that power translates to serious vertical thrust. Using short bursts of speed to catapult out of the water, the white sturgeon earns the nickname River Marlin. White sturgeon is one of the largest sturgeon species on our planet. They fight like crazy, they jump like crazy, and they are beautiful. But no amount of power can protect the white sturgeon from its greatest weakness. These majestic creatures have an extremely slow growth rate, taking decades to reach the monster size Jakob seeks. Believing the largest may have been decimated by overfishing, no one knows how many 20-foot whoppers are still out there.
An hour into their journey, the team stops to pick up Steve McAdam. There's Steve, there Thank you. A biologist who's collecting tissue samples from white sturgeon in order to track the growth rate of these living dinosaurs. A hundred years ago, there was a big fishery and they caught a lot of the big fish that were in this river and the population went down. And so now we're trying to figure out how far did it go down? And is it coming up again? Or is it stable? Or is it still in trouble? Though British Columbia made it illegal to harvest white sturgeon in 1994, allowing only catch and release fishing, the number of large breeding age individuals may be dangerously low. You can fish right out the back in here and catch fish. You can fish in this little trough. It gets very deep off the sandbar and deep into that bank over there. And it drops off into 65 to 80 feet of water. Okay, let's get some bait. Perfect, let's get some bait on these rods. Let's get fishing. Probably cut this one Big down, Yakub, and maybe take that 28 off of there okay. and just run about a 24 ounce weight would probably be really good. So we just drop in a hook in here, pop that through. There, you got a nice, nice sturgeon morsel there. So we're gonna get this one in the water. 